So come on and come on. We call on all Africa. Come, let us be our dream for all. Together we grow stronger and united. Paint out the sky with the proud colors.
So come on and come on, we call on all Africa. Come, let us be our dream for all. Together we grow stronger and united. Paint out the sky with the proud colors on. So come on and come on, we call on all Africa. Come, let us be our dream for all. Together we grow.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين أيتها السيدات والسادة ندعوكم للوقوف للاستماع لنشيد الاتحاد الإفريقي Please rise for the African Union Anthem التجارة بين الدول الإفريقية اي اي تي اف 2025 والرئيس السابق لجمهورية نيجيريا الاتحادية السيدة نائبة الرئيس التنفيذي لبنك التجارة بين البلدان الإفريقية أفريكسين بانك السيد ممثل السفير ألبرت موشانغا لشؤون الصناعة والمعادن وريادة الأعمال والسياحة وفوائدية الاتحاد الإفريقي السيد ممثل الأمين العام أمانة منطقة التجارة الحرة القارية الإفريقية سعادة النائب السابق لرئيس جنوب إفريقيا السيد الرئيس السابق لبنك أفريكسيم بانك ونائب رئيس المجلس الاشتثاري لمعرض التجارة بين البلدان الإفريقية اي اي تي اف 2025 السادة الوزراء السادة مستشاري رئيس الجمهورية أصحاب السعادة السادة الحضور كل في مقامه الجزائر ترحب بكم في حفلة توقيع الذي ينظم برعاية وزارة التجارة وترقية الصادرات وبنك التصدير والاستيراد الإفريقي أفريكسين بانك بالتعاون مع مفوضية الاتحاد الإفريقي ومنطقة التجارة الحرة القارية الإفريقية الأمانة العامة يرحبون بكم في مراسيم حفل توقيع اتفاقية اي اي تي اف 2025 حدث مهم بالنسبة للقارة الإفريقية وبالنسبة للجزائر يهدف إلى زيادة الوعي حول الدورة الرابعة للمعرض التجاري الإفريقي اي اي تي اف 2025 المزمع عقده في الجزائر في سبتمبر 2025 ليمثل بذلك خطوة مهمة نحو معالجة الفجوة في معلومات التجارة والسوق بشكل مستدام لتحقيق أهداف منطقة التجارة الحرة القارية الإفريقية بنجاح ايتيف هو المعرض التجاري الافريقي الوحيد الذي يمثل فرصه بالنسبه للمستثمرين في القاره الافريقيه فرصه للالتقاء وفرصه لاستكشاف الفرص التجاريه ايتيف هو ايضا فرصه لجذب المستثمرين والمنظمات التجاريه من جميع انحاء العالم ينعقد مؤتمر او معرض الاي اي تي اف 2025 في الجزائر في بلد لطالما ساهم في تفعيل التكامل الاقتصادي بين دول القارة الإفريقية بلد لقب لسنوات طوال قبلة التوار عرفانا بالدور المهم الذي لعبه في نصرة القضايا العادلة الجزائر التي لم تدخر جهدا في محاربة كل أشكال عدم الاستقرار والعنف لأن بلدنا على قناعة عميقة بأن الاستقرار هو بداية الازدهار. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Prime Minister, Executive Vice President Inter-African Trade Bank, Chairperson of the EITF 2025 Advisory Council and former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mr. Presenting Ambassador Albert Mushanga, Commissioner for Trade and Industry African Union Commission, Mr. Representing His Excellency Wamkili Mini, Secretary General, IFCFTA Secretariat, Ministries, Excellencies, our distinguished guests. Algeria welcome you to this important ceremony. The Ministry of Trade and Export Promotion and African Export Import Bank, AFRICSIM Bank, in collaboration with African Union Commission and the African Continental Free Trade 
Area Secretaries are pleased today to welcome to all of you to this very important ceremony, the EITF 2025 Signing Agreement Ceremony. This major event is intended to maximize awareness around the fourth edition of African Trade Fair EITF 2025 to be held in Algeria on September 2025, making an important step to sustainably addressing the gap in trade and market information for the successful achievement of the African continental free trade area objectives. EITF is not an only, is only the only Pan-African B2B cross-sector trade fair. It's a major opportunity for African buyers and sellers to meet and explore business opportunities and attract investors and trade organizations from all over the world. EITF 2025 will took place in our country, Algeria, which has never given up supporting intra-African trade. Indeed, Algeria was for long years called the Mecca of revolutionaries, symbolizing courage and determination. Father Madiba was hosted and trained in Algeria during the hardest years of struggle against apartheid. Algeria seeded with, with the oppressed people around the world. Algeria, which has never spared efforts to fight against all forms of instability and terrorism, because our country is deeply convinced that stability is the key of prosperity. Al Kalima al Iftitahiyya li Sayyid Tayyib Zitouni, Wazir al Tijara wa Tarqiyat al Istitmar. For the opening statement, please welcome to Mr. Tayyip Zitouni, Minister of Trade and Export Promotion. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Sayyid al-Wazir al-Awwal. Sayyidat wa sada a'adha al-Hukuma. Sayyidat wa sada ru'asa aw mustashari Sayyid Ra'is al-Jumhuriya. Sayyid al-Amin al-Aam. لأمانة منظمة التجارة الحرة القارية الإفريقية الذي سيلتحق بنا بعد لحظات السيدة نائبة الرئيس التنفيذي للبنك الإفريقي للإسيراد والتصدير السيد رئيس اللجنة المنظمة للمعرض الإفريقي والوفد المرافق له السيدات والسادة ممثل والسلك الدبلوماسي المعتمد بالجزائر السيدات والسادة رؤساء اللجان الاقتصادية بالبرلمان بغرفته السيدات والسادة رؤساء الهيئات والجمعيات والمنظمات والنقابات وجمعيات أرباب العمل السيدات والسادة رؤساء المؤسسات وممثليهم السيدات والسادة الحضور الكريم كل باسمه وجميل واسمه السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته في البداية نرحب بضيوف الجزائر وعلى رأسهم السيد أوباسانغو الرئيس النيجيري الأسبق ورئيس المجلس الاستشاري لمعرض التجارة البينية الإفريقية إياتياف حاليا والوفد المرافق له والسيد وامكيلي من الأمين العام لأمانة منطقة التجارة الحرة القارية الإفريقية زليكاف وقلت الذي يلتحق بنا بعد لحظات قليلة والسيد كنايو السيدة كنايو واني نائبة الرئيس التنفيذي للبنك الإفريقي للتصدير والاستيراد أفريك زين بانك والوفد المرافق لهم وكذا الأعضاء المشاركين عن الاتحاد الإفريقي نرحب بكم جميعا ونلتقي اليوم لنوثق الجهود التي بذلتها الجزائر غداة الترشح والفوز باحتضان فعاليات الطبعة الرابعة لمعرض تجارة البينية الإفريقية إياتياف 2025 ما يثبت جاهزية بلادنا وتوفرها على كل الهياكل القاعدية والإمكانيات اللوجستية والتنظيمية التي تمكنها من ريادة استضافة هذا الحدث الاقتصادي القاري الهام إن احتضان بلدنا لهذه الطبعة 
يأتي في سياق تجسيد استراتيجية السيد عبد المجيد تبون رئيس الجمهورية الرامية إلى تعزيز التكامل الإفريقي ودعم التعاون الاقتصادي بين دول قارتنا السمراء بهدف بناء قاعدة اقتصادية قوية لتحقيق التنمية المستدامة والرفاهية لشعوب القارة السيد الوزير الأول ضيوف الجزائر الكرام السيدات والسادة إن بلادي تعد بلدا استراتيجيا يحتل موقعا حيويا في العالم يتميز بكونه ملتقى للقارات الثلاثة إفريقيا أوروبا وآسيا ما يجعلها بوابة للتبادل التجاري بينها ويؤهلها أيضا لتصبح مركزا اقتصاديا حقيقيا في المنطقة وفي هذا السياق فإن الإصلاحات العميقة التي باشرها السيد رئيس الجمهورية في شقها الاقتصادي اعتمدت على مقاربة اقتصادية شاملة ومتكاملة أتت بثمارها من خلال تحقيق ميزان تجاري إيجابي بالإضافة إلى تسجيل منحة تصاعدي للصادرات خارج المحروقات وهذا ما يعكس تنوع النسيج الاقتصادي المحقق أو المحقق للقيمة المضافة في عدة مجالات اقتصادية تشمل خاصة القطاع الفلاحي الصناعات الغذائية الصناعات البتروكيميائية المناجم النسيج والمعدات الكهربائية والصناعية والإلكترونية وغيرها من القطاعات حيث ساهمت في تنويع الاقتصاد الجزائري وتوفير فرص العمل وخلق سلاسل القيم وقصد تعزيز التكامل الاقتصادي الإفريقي شرعت بلادي منذ سنة 2023 في فتح بنوك ومعارض جزائرية دائمة عبر العديد من الدول الإفريقية كموريتانيا والسنغال كمرحلة أولى والتي ستتبعها دول أخرى بالإضافة إلى إنشاء مناطق, حر مناطق حرة ذات بعد إفريقي ولتعزيز التبادل أو التبادلات التجارية البينية الإفريقية عمدت الجزائر على توسيع شبكة النقل أهمها إنجاز طريق الوحدة الإفريقية الذي يربط الجزائر بلايغوس ويضم أكثر من 700 مليون نسمة على مستوى الدول السبعة التي سترتبط بهذا الطريق وكذا الشروع في إنجاز الطريق الرابط بين الجزائر وموريتانيا عبر تيندوف زويرات ما مكن بلادنا من تبوء المركز الثاني إفريقيا من حيث شبكة الطرق المنجزة ببلوغ عتبة 128 ألف كيلومتر ولعل أهم ميزات هذا الإنجاز من الناحية الاقتصادية أنه سيعمل على ربط موانئ بلادنا في الشمال بالعمق الإفريقي وسيشكل محورا رئيسيا لتنمية التجارة البينية والأنشطة الاقتصادية بين شمال إفريقيا وجنوبها خاصة بعد دخول منطقة التجارة الحرة القارية الإفريقية حيز التنفيذ وتحويل الطريق العابر للصحراء في, في جزئه الجزائري إلى رواق اقتصادي السيد الوزير الأول ضيوف الجزائر الكرام السيدات والسادة إن المؤهلات التي تسخر بها قارتنا الإفريقية تعتبر حافزا مهما من أجل إرساء اقتصاد متين ينخرط في سلاسل القيم العالمية وهذا ما يصب إليه قادة الدول الإفريقية والذي سيتحقق لا محالة إن شاء الله من خلال تكثيف النشاطات الاقتصادية بين الدول الإفريقية ويأتي موعد الطبعة الرابعة لمعرض التجارة البينية الإفريقية ليساهم في تحقيق الأهداف المرجوة والتي سنعمل معا على إنجاحها وجعلها أداة فعالة في تعزيز التعاون التجاري البيني وتوزيع مج وتوسيع مجالات الاستثمار في القارة الإفريقية وفي الأخير لا يسعني إلا أن أتقدم بجزيل الشكر والامتنان لكل من 
يعني صادق وانتخب الجزائر لكي تتبوء هذه المكانة وكي تحتل هذا المنصب وترعى هذا المعرض وكذا الشكر والامتنان موصول للمنظمين والشركاء على المساهمة في إنجاح هذه الاحتفالية التي نعلن من خلالها أن الجزائر هي وجهة إفريقيا اقتصاديا سنة 2025 والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته شكرا سيد الوزير طيب زيتوني ذكرتم باستراتيجية رئيس الجمهورية السيد عبد المجيد تبون لبناء تكامل تجاري واقتصادي حقيقي ذكرتم أيضا بالإصلاحات الجذرية التي يحرص عليها رئيس الجمهورية لتقوية وتنويع الاقتصاد الجزائري هذه الإصلاحات الجذرية شملت فتح بنوك في دول إفريقية أخرى وفتح مناطق تجارة حرة Please welcome now to Kanoya Kanayo Awani, Executive Vice President, Intra-African Trade Bank. Excellency Nadir Labawi, Prime Minister, Government of the People's Rep Democratic Republic of Algeria. His Excellency Chief Olusha Gorbassanjo, former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and chairperson of the Inter-African Trade Fair Advisory Council. Her Excellency Madame Balet Baleka Mbete, the former deputy president of the Republic of South Africa and member of the Advisory Council of the IETF. Excellency Tayeb Zituni, Minister of Trade and Export Promotion of the Government of Algeria, his Excellency Wamkele Mene, represented in this morning session, Secretary General of the AFCFTA Secretariat, Excellency Ambassador Albad Muchanga, AU Commissioner for Economic Development, Trade, Tourism, Industry and Minerals, represented by my brother, Mr. Charles, Charles Chiumuya, Mr. Jean-Louis Ekra, former President of the African Export Import Bank and Deputy Chairperson of the Inter-African Trade Fair Advisory Council, Mr. Karim Bukadum, Director General of the Algerian Company of Fairs and Exhibitions, SAFEX, members of the IATF 2025 Advisory Council that are represented here, ambassadors, ministers of the diplomatic, members of the diplomatic corps that are present, government officials, corporate leaders, captains of industries, colleagues at Afrex in Bank, members of the press, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I extend the warm greetings of Professor Benedict Torama, the President of the African Export Import Bank, to Your Excellency, the Prime Minister. He expresses regret for his inability to participate in this auspicious signing ceremony. And indeed, to Professor Rama, this trade fair is a strong backbone for a meaningful continental transformation. It is for this reason that he remains greatly indebted to you and your government for agreeing to host this auspicious event. The IATF is not novel to this regime or to this period. About 61 years ago, the African Union, or then called the Organization of African Union, did institute an all-Africa trade fair. That trade fair held either once or twice and did not go very far. But we still believe in its relevance to the transformation of our great continent. About five months ago, at this official opening, at the official opening of the third edition of the Traffic and Trade that held in Cairo last year, the chairman proclaimed Algeria as a host of the fourth edition. That decision to design, designate Algeria as a host of IATF 2025 was not a difficult one. Since the inaugural fair in 2018, the Algerian public and private sectors have been among the most faithful participants. Besides its advanced infrastructure to host the fair, the Algerian government has, unlike any other, shown a genuine understanding of the importance of this continental initiative. Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the, the world economy has steadily 
and progressively veered towards protectionism and new mercantilism, where the pursuit of self-interest at the cost of others has become the overriding preferred foreign policy of major world economies. Unfortunately, this has been at the expense of global cooperation under a multilateral system that has, in part, supported shared growth and prosperity, particularly among developing countries, for almost half a century. In, in, such, in, in such a fractured world, where every economic group, grouping has, has to fend for itself, Africa has no option but to fend for itself and to pursue self-reliance under a continental collaborative platform. The Inter-African Trade Fair opens alternate routes for African trade. It has become the platform for actualizing the African Continental Free Trade Agreements. It expands and deepens knowledge of the continent's trading environment. It enhances the industrial capacity of African economies. Ultimately, IETF has become an engine for accelerating combined trade and investment deals and business flows within the continent. The last three trade fairs have generated combined trade and investment deals of no less than 120 billion US dollars. If you want to wonder what the $20 million represents, and let me also add that in particular in Cairo alone last year, at the third edition, deals of close to 43 actually, to be exact, $43.8 billion were closed. So if you wonder what do these deals represent, if you're wondering, that means that African buyers found buyers in new markets across Africa. And that industries also found new sources of raw materials, investment, and capital goods. There were government-to-government -government deals that were concluded in critical sectors such as agriculture and agro-processing that have been forged. In fact, the Export Agriculture for Food Security Initiative that had four African governments involved was also consummated at that trade fair. African contractors won major, won won major um, projects with governments and other large companies. Let me even say even women in SMEs and women-led businesses found buyers, found markets elsewhere that they never imagined they would. There was a particular woman, a Ghanaian woman, first impressions elite um, business she runs in Ghana. She was involved in, in displaying cashew nuts and dried foods as a small business, and she found buyers in Egypt, South Africa, Kenya, Zimbabwe. So much so that her profits within the period have grown to 65%. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Your Excellencies, apart from the trade exhibition, the IATL brings a new lease of life to the continent's culture and creative industry through its novel creative Africa Nexus. We also call it the CanNex program. It is a platform that showcases Africa's creative talents in music, film, sports, literature, fashion, arts and craft, and also the recently introduced gastronomy and cul culinary arts. IATF will host a dry run this year as CanEx is a, is, a, is a Creative African Nexus pullout. It's a weekend event that will serve as a dry run for the main trade fair. It will hold in this country, in this city, probably in this very venue, between October 16th and 19th this year. IATF also showcases an automotive show. It's also an, an automotive forum, a trade which is probably the, the only automotive platform that supports the entire value chain in this continent. It will also host an, a youth forum, a trade and investment forum, a youth entrepreneurship forum, and working with the African Union and the AFC Secretariat, as well as other partners, most of whom are here, we actually intend to make the fourth edition of this fair a resounding success for the benefit of Algeria and the rest of, the, of Africa. Algeria being one of the more advanced economies on this continent with a strong industrial base, is in a strong position to benefit from hosting the trade fair. It has a unique opportunity to showcase its vast variety of industrial goods and other investment potential. The fair will boost tourism and other ancillary businesses. It will expand economic opportunities and open new trading partnerships 
between Algerian firms and the African counterparts. In the immediate, even for local, the local ecosystem, it is expected to attract about 35,000 visitors into Algeria at the, at the period of a trade fair. That, again, will provide significant gains, windfall gains for your small businesses, for those in the hospitality, and even in the tourism ecosystem. JW, um, the Marriott Group had to give us an award for what, for what they experienced in Cairo last year. Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, we recognize that hosting a successful trade fair is not the responsibility of any individual institution or government. It is a shared responsibility that will require strong and dynamic partnerships among all stakeholders. That is why we have forged an unbreachable alliance with the African Union Commission, the AFCFT Secretariat, and all the various other partner, uh, partner institutions you know, as part of our um, advisory council, working with them um, to host the trade fair. Above all, success will depend on the unwavering commitment and support from the government of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria. I'm most confident that with the steadfast commitments your government has already shown, we are poised to deliver yet another successful event for the African people but also specifically for Algerians. Permit me to thank His Excellency President Olusegun Obasanjo, the Chairman of the IETF Advisory Council, his Deputy, Mr. Jean-Louis Ekra, the Secretary General of this AFCFT, His Excellency Mr. Wam Kelemene, the AU Commissioner for Economic Development, Trade, Tourism, Industry and Minerals, His Excellency Ambassador Alba Muchanga, as well as all the other partner institutions that we have, who have been the pillar on which we have built an enduring Pan-African trade instrument, the IATF. We thank you and your representatives for taking the time from your busy schedules to participate in this important signing ceremony. And as I conclude my remarks, I remind us that we have a lifetime opportunity to change the fortunes of our continent. We have available to us the tools and resources that we need we must take it. This, third, this fourth edition, I beg your pardon, of the trade fair gives us another opportunity to continue to deepen the trade and investment ties among Africans and foster the attainment of our shared aspirations that are enshrined in the African Continental Free Trade Agreement and also in the Africa that we all want to see and desire. We call upon all African governments, the public sector, the private sector, organized business associations, organized industry group, groups to participate in IATF 2025 as exhibitors, as buyers, sponsors, delegates, visitors, speakers to the conferences as we work together to realize the vision of an integrated and prosperous Africa. We certainly most, most certainly look forward to a most memorable and probably the most successful trade fair in 2025. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Mrs. Kanayu Awani. Thank you for your speech. Transformation of our great continent is taking place thanks to all these programmatic initiatives. EITF became a major program for trade and partnership around the country, and you mentioned also the important role of African women in different industry sectors. Please welcome now to His Excellency, Chief Olishi Gono Basanju, Chairperson of the AITF 2025 Advisory Council and former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, the Prime Minister, the government of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, Your Excellency, and my sister, Balikam Bete, 
founder and chairperson of the Board of Trustees of Nalshisa and former Deputy President of the Republic of South Africa. Mr. Jean Louis Ekra, my deputy and former president of African Afri Afri Bank. Your Excellency Tayeb Sutuni, Minister of Trade and Export Promotion, Government of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria. Mrs. Kanayo Awani, Executive Vice President, Intra Africa Trade Bank, African Bank. Mr. Karim Bukadum, Director General of Algeria Company. Of affairs and exhibition. Members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by expressing how deeply satisfied and pleased that I'm here with you. Here in a country that at one time was almost my second home, and I'm very happy to come back. A very good morning to you all, and I am delighted to welcome such a great August audience to this signing ceremony of the IATF 2025 hosting agreement with the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria. It is quite a momentous occasion being here today as the signing as the signing of the agreement will formally confer the right to Algeria to host the fourth edition of the Intra-Africa Trade Fair in 2025 to be hosted in, the, in this beautiful and historic city of Algeria from 4th to 10th September 2025. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to express my utmost congratulation to His Excellency, the President of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, His Excellency, the Prime Minister of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, and the Minister of Trade and Export Promotion of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, and the entire members of the government of People's Democratic Republic of Algeria who contributed in bringing the signing of this agreement to reality. Your dedication and hard work have made it possible that we gather here today for the important occasion for ensuring that Algeria won the bid to host the fourth edition of the Inter-African Trade Fair. And once again, we heartily congratulate the 
Democratic Republic of Algeria. The IATF 2025 hosting agreement represent more than just a contractual agreement. Rather, it symbolizes a collective responsibility of the partners for excellence and innovation in continuing the tradition of the intra-Africa trade fair, which has become established as the Africa Continental Trade Agreement marketplace and the go-to trade and investment event on the African continent. It is, in addition, friendship, cooperation, integration, an investment event and the biggest of its kind in Africa. The IATF is now a foremost event in the African continent of economic, social, trade, and even policy event. It is the passionate pursuit of these goals and African Bank in collaboration with the African Union, with the African Union Commission and Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement Secretariat are championing the noble cause of changing the socioeconomic landscape of Africa by devising progressive initiatives aimed at promoting intra-Africa trade and continental integration. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we live in a global economy and we are all connected in one way or the other. or in the in the global village for trade and for sharing and of course for caring but if you look at the African share of global trade, it is very minimal, at just about 3%. Likewise, the volume of trade among African countries themselves has actually declined in the past two years from about 18% now to 14% as at 2022, showing the effect of the pandemic. 
this does not support the development and socioeconomic condition of the continent. Instead of buying from each other and benefiting from the time-tested positive impact of trade, we are instead trading with others, worsened by the fact that we are exporting our huge resources at very poor value and importing about 86% of what we need, mainly manufactured products at much higher prices with outsiders benefiting from our own laws. This is a huge opportunity cost to the African continent, which the intra-Africa trade Uh, which in the intra-African trade fair uh, seeks to correct. We need information about products and market, and we need to have the infrastructure that will make it possible to trade more among ourselves. As the minister pointed out in his speech, we need the type of road infrastructure and thriving coastal shipping. Why can't we have coastal shipping from Algiers along the West African up to the Cape. These are the type of infrastructure that we need to be able to increase trade among ourselves. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I would like to reiterate that the IATF 2025 Advisory Council is committed to delivering together with you, our partner, and those who will sponsor and who will participate in the Intra-African Trade Fair all that will make this trade fair a great success. Through IATF, we must strive to raise the bar as we progress towards attaining of our development goals as espoused in the African Union Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, and in attaining the goals of bringing Africans together transact in a common marketplace. 
in closing considering the zeal demonstrated by Algeria, the host for IATF 2025, I want to express my sincere appreciation and, of course, of, of, uh, optimism for the journey we have gone together so far. And I am sure that the IATF 2025 will be bigger, better, and more appreciated than all the three that we have had in the past. I like what I heard here yesterday, that not only will the IATF 2025 improve and make possible trade transaction within Africa, it will improve and make possible trade transaction between Africa and the Arab world. This is very unique as a result of you agreeing to host the IATF 2025. Thank you once again, and I look forward to seeing you at IATF 2025 as we continue this journey of African renaissance, particularly in trade and integration together. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you for your wise and kind uh, speech, your presence among us on this very ceremony means a lot. Thank you very much. You remind the importance of having data and infrastructure, of course. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we, uh, time is running out, so we kindly uh, remind our uh, distinguished guests to not exceed 10 minutes speech, please. We are going to listen now to Mr. Chiza Charles Shumya, representing Ambassador Albert Mushanga, Commissioner for Trade and Industry, African Union Commission. Your Excellency, Mr. Nadeo Laboni, the Prime Minister of the People's Republic of Algeria. Your Excellency, Chief Olusugun Obasanjo, Chairperson of the IATF Advisory Council and former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellency, Madam Bete, former Vice President of the Republic of South Africa. Your Excellency, Minister of Trade and Export of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, Mr. Tayub Zituni, and all the ministers of this great republic that are present in this room uh, this morning. Madam Kanayo Awani, Executive Vice President, Inter-African Trade Bank, Ada Frexim Bank. Mr. Karim Bugdum, Director General of Suffix. Let me also recognize the representative of uh, His Excellency Wamkele Mene, Secretary General of the AFCFTA Secretariat, Mr. Chakwi Jabali. 
Mr. Jean Ekra, former president of Afrexim Bank and vice president of the Inter-African Inter Trade Fair Advisory Council. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The African Union is delighted to be part and parcel of today's function in which we will witness yet another milestone in this journey of inter-African trade fairs, which is taking place in this beautiful and historic city of Algiers, under the high patronage of His Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Algeria, uh, Mr. Nadil Laboni. I bring you the warm and fraternal greetings of both his Excellency Musa Faki, Chairperson of the African Union, and His Excellency Ambassador Albert Muchanga, Commissioner for Economic Development, Trade, Tourism, and Minerals. They all wanted to be part of this uh, historic uh, function today, but due to exigencies of duties, they are unable to. My duty, therefore, this morning is to deliver these remarks on their behalf. Your Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, we at the African Union are delighted that the African, Inter-African Trade Fair series continue to register good success and to deliver on the goals that it was set. We are also uh, delighted that the government of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria came forward to host this fourth edition after winning uh, a very competitive bid. The Inter-African Trade Fair continues to play a very important and strategic role in Africa's trade development story. It has allowed Africa to move beyond narratives to action. You may wish to recall, Your Excellencies, that in 2012, when the decision was made to come up with the African continental free trade area, another decision was made uh, to boost intra-Africa trade, which through an action plan that is called the BIAT Action Plan. One of the clusters uh, in that action plan aims to address the challenges related to lack of trade information, and the ITF has so far proved to be a solution uh, to that challenge. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, trade information is key for the successful implementation of the AFCFTA as well as in boosting intra-Africa trade. Africa needs a vibrant AFCFTA. It needs a vibrant market, especially given the global dynamics and the experience uh, which have resulted in growing protectionism, disruption and the paralysis of supply chains and drastic drop in demand. These disruptions for the past four years in the global trading system need to serve as a constant reminder that a strong, self-sustaining African market is crucial for our survival. In addition, the lessons of other regions of the world, such as Asia, continue to show us that trade can be a powerful tool for economic growth. While trade has, was able to lift millions out of poverty in Asia, the same has not reflected in our continent. As you held, intra-African trade is still very low. But the IATF is one of that important uh, tool to make this change. Your Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, the FCFTA was designed to change this story as well. Not only was it meant to boost into Africa trade, but it was meant to deal with Africa's perennial challenges uh, such as job creation, high levels of poverty, uh, low levels of manufacturing and industrial base. It was designed to create a predictable legal framework for Africa's trade environment and investments, hence offering more guarantees to investors and thereby bringing certainty and predictability to the African trading environment. However, this can be attained if, among others, we pay particular attention to ensuring that our private sectors have unabated access and availability to information uh, for both where to source their products and at the same time 
where to sell them. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, having in our hands such powerful tools for our trade development should be reasons enough for us to spur into action and to faithfully rally our energies to implement this agreement. It is therefore in this regard that the African Union Commission continues to implement flanking measures to make sure that uh, all these um, tools that we have uh, are able to make us realize the African single market. And one such measure that we are working with at the African Union Commission is called the African Trade Observatory, which when completed is expected to ensure that the continent has current qualitative and quantitative trade related data and information from all African Union member states and in real time. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to conclude by stating that the African Union, we see partnerships as very key uh, in all these programs about trade development in the continent. It is therefore in these reasons that we really appreciate and thank the sterling role that the African Bank has been uh, playing in this regard not only in the organization of inter-African trade fairs, but also in providing trade finance in this continent. We therefore look forward to IATF 2025, and we believe it will, be, it will surpass all the milestones of the previous editions and set new standards for trade fairs in the continent as it contributes to Agenda 2063. We wish the host country and all stakeholders fruitful preparations for the successful hosting of the fourth edition of the trade fair. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Mr. Sh Mr. Uh, Shumya Chizachal. You are representing Ambassador Albert Mushanga Commissioner for Trade and Industry, African Union Commission. The last speech now, I invite Shawqi Jabali, representing His Excellency Wamkili Mini, Secretary General, IFCFTA Secretariat. Your Excellency, uh, Mr. Nadir Larbewi, Prime Minister of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, Your Excellency uh, Chief Oli Sogan Obatonjo, Chairperson of the IATF 2025, Advisory Council and former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. For the benefit of time, uh, let me stand by the protocol used by uh, uh, those who spoke before me, all protocols being observed. Dear colleagues and friends, good morning. I am delighted to be here today for the momentous signing ceremony of the IATF 2025 Host Country Agreement and the inaugural meeting of the IATF 2025 Adv Advisory Council. At the outset, I would like to state that the AFCFTA Secretariat is excited to co-host the biannual Intra-African Trade Fair branded the AFCFTA market place with the African Bank and the African Union Commission. The IATF is our strategic response to the challenge of trade information scarcity, aiming to enhance intra-African trade and investments, all without the need for the outside help. And it serves as a symbol of hope and opportunity, breaking down breaking down conventional trade and investment barriers to unite the diverse yet cohesive African identi identity. The IATF 2025 marks the fourth edition of the fair and reflects our strong partnership in delivering an event that yields significant benefits for our continent. It highlights our collective commitment to collaboration innovation and the enhancement of intra-African trade and investment for the well-being of our people and the entire continent. As we convene today, I want to underscore the important 
and transformative impact that trade and investment have on Africa's economic growth and prosperity. One of the fair's standout initiatives, the Creative Africa Nexus, highlighted the continent's flourishing creative economy by showcasing sectors such as fashion, music, film, arts and crafts, sports, gastronomy, and culinary arts, Canex provided a platform for African creatives to gain visibility, connect with international markets, and attract investment. This initiative not only promotes cultural exchange, but also contributes to economic diversification, job creation, and the strengthening of Africa's cultural industries. Similarly, the Africa Automotive Show played a crucial role in spotlighting the automotive industry's potential in the continent. By providing a platform for manufacturers, assemblers, original equipment manufacturers, and component suppliers to exhibit their products and network with potential buyers and suppliers, the event catalyzed opportunities for growth and development within the sector. This is particularly important for Africa, where the automotive industry is poised for expansion due to increasing demand, urbanization, and economic growth. The Africa Automotive Show thus contributes to building a sustainable automotive industry that can generate employment, foster technological innovation, and reduce dependency on imports. The various activities and their successes at IATF 2023 illustrate the vital role of trade fairs and exhibitions in not only facilitating business transactions, but also in shaping economic landscapes. They provide a unique convergence point for ideas, innovations, and partnerships that propel sectors forward, catalyze economic diversification, and enhance competitiveness on a global scale. As we move forward, the insights and successes for, uh, from the IATF 2023, together with those from previous fairs, will undoubtedly illuminate the path for future initiatives aimed at leveraging trade and investment to unlock Africa's full economic potential. Today, we also celebrate the selection of Algeria as the, the host country for IATF 2025, a choice made through an extensive review process. Algeria's selection following Egypt and South Africa underscores its key role and dedication to fostering African unity and economic progress. Algeria has demonstrated its commitment by promptly ratifying the AFCFT agreement and actively engaging in the preparatory work, including submitting its AFCFTA tariff offer, which is among those officially adopted. The active participation reflects Algeria's leadership within the AFCFTA and its government's commitment to continental economic integration. Algeria's recent induction into the Guided Trade Initiative coupled with its role as the host for IATF 2025, is poised to yield significant benefits, particularly given its current economic structure. With the hydrocarbon sector, particularly predominantly petroleum, contributing to approximately 20% of its GDP and accounting for nearly 90% of export revenue, Algeria's economy faces notable exposure to volatilities of global oil prices. This dependence underscores an urgent need for diversification, a challenge that resonates with the experiences of other member states. By joining the Guided Trade Initiative, Algeria is making a big step towards improving trade conditions and growing its manufacturing sector with a focus on non-hydrocarbon industries. This transition is vital for broadening Algeria's trade activities and bolstering its economic resilience against external shocks. 
despite its involvement in the Pan-African free trade area, Pan-Arab, sorry, Pan-Arab free trade area and a bilateral agreement with uh, Mauritania, Algeria has had limited preferential access to the, to the broader African market. The AFCFT and IATF 2024, therefore, offer a significant chance to expand market access through tariff reductions and the elimination of non-tariff barriers, among other advantages, paving the way for increased trade and investment opportunities. With the esteemed presence of His Excellency Prime Minister Larbawi and the strong initiative demonstrated in the bid to host, I am confident that the fourth edition of the Inter-African Trade Fair will be executed with precision, promising outcomes that will meet our collective aspirations. As we gear up for the landmark event, our focus must be on inclusivity, ensuring that every sector, entrepreneur, and country, particularly our vibrant youth and women-led businesses, finds a place. We must also lean into innovation and the digital economy, pushing for digital integration that simplifies trading for African enterprises in an increasingly digitalized world. Algeria's eagerness to welcome Africa and the world in 2025 exemplifies African solidarity in action. We can't wait to get together in Algiers in 2025. I call upon all stakeholders to actively participate in and support IATF 2025, including governments, businesses, and entrepreneurs in Algeria and throughout the continent. Let's seize this opportunity to eliminate trade barriers, foster new alliances, and begin a new chapter in Africa's journey toward economic recovery and integration. I'm optimistic that the collect with the collective effort and dedication of all involved, including the host country, Algeria, African Bank, and the African Union Commission, we will deliver a successful IATF 2025. In conclusion, I extend my deepest gratitude to the government and people of Algeria for their gracious hospitality and to all our esteemed partners and delegates for your unwavering commitment to advancing Africa's economic transformation. Together, let's ensure that IATF 2025 becomes a defining moment in our collective quest for African unity and prosperity. Thank you. Shukran, Sayyid Shawqi Jabali. أنت ممثل لوامكيلي ميني سكرتري جنرال اوف اي اف سي اف تي اي سكرتري ليز اند جنتلمان وي انفايت يو تو ديسكفر ذا بروموشنال فيديو اباوت اي اي تي اف 2025 لا بنك افريكان دامبور اكسبور افريكسين بنك en collaboration avec la Commission de l'Union africaine et le secrétariat de la ZLECAF, vous présente la quatrième foire commerciale intra-africaine, l'IATF 2025, qui sera accueillie par la République algérienne démocratique et populaire à Alger. L'IATF 2025, la foire commerciale intra-africaine. Connectez les marchés africains. Se basant sur le succès de l'IATF 2023 qui a accueilli près de 2000 exposants, plus de 28 000 visiteurs, 130 pays participants et 43,8 milliards de dollars d'accords de commerce et d'investissement. L'IATF 2025 prévoit atteindre encore plus la numéro 1 des foires commerciales panafricaines et intersectorielles. Marché pour la zone de libre-échange continentale africaine. Plateforme par excellence pour présenter les marques, les biens et les services de l'Afrique. Comportera une exposition commerciale permettant aux pays, aux grandes entreprises et aux PME de présenter les meilleurs produits et services africains. Un forum sur le commerce et l'investissement avec d'éminents conférenciers africains et internationaux. Le Nexus de l'Afrique créative, Canex, comprenant le sommet de l'Afrique créative et une exposition des industries créatives et culturelles. Une plateforme B2B-B2J pour les rencontres, les échanges commerciaux et la conclusion d'accords et d'investissements. 
journée spéciale mettant en lumière les opportunités régionales en matière d'affaires, de commerce, d'investissement et de tourisme. IATF Virtuel, la plateforme interactive en ligne qui présente les marques, les entreprises, les biens et les services d'Afrique. Le Salon africain de l'automobile, comprenant le Forum de l'automobile et le Salon de l'automobile. Programme d'aide à la création d'entreprises des jeunes de l'UA. Débloquer le commerce et l'investissement pour les jeunes entreprises africaines. Et la journée de la diaspora. Un sommet dédié qui met l'accent sur les liens commerciaux et entre l'Afrique et sa diaspora. IETF 2025. La foire commerciale intra-africaine. À Alger, en Algérie. Nous serons heureux de vous y accueillir. Ladies and gentlemen, for the signing ceremony, please welcome to Mr. Tayyip Zitouni, Minister of Trade and Export Promotion. Mr. Mrs. Kanayu Awani, Executive Vice President, Intra-African Trade Bank. Mr. Chiza Charles Shumia, Representing Ambassador, Alberts Mushanga, Commissioner for Trade and Industry, African Union Commission. Mr. Shawqi Jabali, Representing His Excellency, Wamkili Mini, Secretary General, IFCFTA Secretariat. Monsieur le Wazir, Tfadal, Ado l'an, Asseyed, Al Wazir al Awal, Nadir al Arbawi, Lil Tahika Bina, Mr. Nadir al Arbawi, Prime Minister of People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, and His Excellency Chief Olishigun Obasanju, Chairperson of the EITF 2025 Advisory Council and former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please. The signing ceremony, EITF 2025. <laughs> Mr. Taib Zitouni, Minister of Trade and Export Promotion. Mrs. Kanayo Awani, Executive Vice President, Intra-African Trade Bank. Mr. Chiza Charles Shumia, Representing Ambassador, Albert Mushanga, Commissioner for Trade and Industry, African Union Commission. Mr. Shawqi Jabali, Representing His Excellency, Wamkili Mini, Secretary General, IFCFTA Secretariat with the presence, of course, with, of Nadil Arbawi, Prime Minister of People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, and His Excellency Chief Olishigon Obasanjo, Chairperson of the EITF 2025, Advisory Council, and former President for the Federal Republic of Ni Nigeria. And we invite also Afrixin Bank key principal delegation to join us for the family photo, please. Key principal delegation. Shukran lakum, Sayyid Wazir al Awal. Nadir Arbawi ala Hudurikum. Hudurukum Dalil ala Ahamia al Baliga alati al Ahamia al Baliga 
للجزائر لخلق تكامل اقتصادي افريقي حقيقي Thank you your excellency chief Olishigono Basanju chairperson of the ITF 2025 advisory council and former president of federal of the Federal Republic of Nigeria your presence means a lot on this very day thank you very much شكرا جزيلا ندعو السيدات والساده الحضور الالتزام باماكنهم لتمكين دوله الوزير الاول من الانصراف من القاعه شكرا جزيلا وسنواصل مراسم التوقيع بعد لحظات شكرا لكم سيد الوزير الاول thank you very much mr obasanjo for your presence and for your speech for your kind and wisdom words thank you very much وسنستمع بعد الحضرات للسيد كريم بقدوم المدير العام لسافكس Director General of Algerian Company for Fur and Export سيد بقدوم تفضل سيدي كريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين السيدات والسادة أعضاء الحكومة السيد المستشار لدى السيد رئيس الجمهورية السيد الأمين العام لمنطقة التبادل الحر القارية الإفريقية السيدة نائبة الرئيس التنفيذي للبنك الإفريقي للاستيراد والتصدير السيد رئيس اللجنة المنظمة للمعرض الإفريقي والوفد المرافق له السيدات والسادة ممثل السلك الدبلوماسي المعتمد لدى الجزائر السيدات والسادة رؤساء الهيئات والجمعيات المهنية السيدات والسادة رؤساء المؤسسات السيدات والسادة الحضور الكريم كل باسمه وصفته ومقامه أسرة الإعلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته لي عظيم الشرف أن أحضر اليوم في هذا الاحتفال البهيج المقام على شرف توقيع اتفاقية احتضان الجزائر للمعرض الإفريقي البيني في طبعته الرابعة لسنة 2025 والذي شاركت فيه الجزائر منذ طبعته الأولى سنة 2018 حيث سجلت خلال طبعاته ثلاث حضور دائم ومتميز من حيث عدد ونوعية المؤسسات المشاركة وحتى من حيث مساحة العرض مما أهلها للفوز خلال دورة دربان والقاهرة بوسام أحسن جناح وأحسن جناح مبتكر على التوالي إن حرص بلادنا على احتضان المعرض الإفريقي البين الرابع يعكس الاستراتيجية الاقتصادية لرئيس الجمهورية السيد عبد المجيد تبون في تحقيق التكامل الإفريقي من خلال تعزيز التبدلات الاقتصادية وتوسيع مجالات التعاون واستغلال الفرص الاستثمارية والإمكانات الاقتصادية لتسخر بها قارتنا السمراء أيها السيدات والسادة إن صرح قصر المعارض بأجنحته ومختلف هياكله بموقع الاستراتيجي وبالحركية التي يشهدها منذ خلال من خلال استقبال وتنظيم ما يقارب خمسون تظاهرة وطنية ودولية تستقطب أكثر من 3.5 مليون زائر سنويا مع تجربة تفوق نصف القرن في قطاع تنظيم المعارض بالإضافة إلى مشروع توسيع وتجديد هياكله الذي انطلق فعليا ليكون صرح اقتصادي يضاف إلى المنشآت القاعدية التي تمتلكها بلادنا له المكان الأفضل لاحتضان حدث بهذا الحجم وهذه الأهمية سيكون المعرض التجاري الإفريقي البيني 
اي تي اف 2025 منصه فريده من نوعها للشركات الافريقيه لعرض منتجاتها واستكشاف اسواق جديده واقامه شراكات تجاريه مثمره لجميع الاطراف ان الملتزمون في الشركه الجزائريه للمعارض والتصدير بالعمل بمعيه شركائنا الافارقه لتشجيع هذا النوع من التدهورات الاقتصادية في إفريقيا التي من شأنها توفير فضاءات للاحتكاك وفرص للشراكة والاستثمار وفي الختام لكي لا أطول عليكم أود أن أعبر عن امتناني الصادق لجميع الأطراف المشاركة التي ساهمت في تحقيق هذا الحدث شركاؤنا وزملاؤنا وجميع الذين عملوا بلا كل لتحقيق هذه الرؤية المشتركة يستحقون كل التقدير وأؤكد مجددا أننا مصممون على إنجاح هذا الموعد الاقتصادي التجاري الأكبر في إفريقيا موعدنا في الجزائر وجهة إفريقيا سنة 2025 مرحبا بكم جميعا والسلام عليكم Shukran Said Bukhadoum. We invite now Mr. John Louis Ekra, former president of Afriksim Bank and deputy chairperson of EITF 2025's Advisory Council. Your Excellencies, all protocol observed. As we draw this event to a close, I want to express my deepest appreciation to the government of the People's Democratic Republic of Algeria, Afrexim Bank, African Union Commission, AFCFTA Secretariat, IATF partners, all the participants present here and collaborators who have made this gathering a success. Today, we have witnessed the power of African unity, shared purpose, and collective action towards a path taken to promote intra-African trade and investment. It is through our combined efforts that we can drive positive change, foster innovation, and create a better future for all the inhabitants of the African continent. I urge each one of you to carry the spirit of collaboration and determination forward as we continue our individual and collective journeys towards African socio-economic emancipation to achieve the Africa we want. Thank you once again to each and every one of you for your presence to be part of this important occasion, which also serves as the official launch of IATF 2025. To the diplomatic community representing various African countries, the business community, and the media present here, let us go forth with renewed energy and purpose knowing that together we can achieve great things by partnering with you to promote the IATF 2025, which we'll hold next year here in Algiers. 
action starts from now, and we will be counting on your support. Safe travels and best wishes until we meet again at IATF 2025. I thank you. Thank you, Jean-Louis Ekra, former president of Afrixim Bank and deputy chairperson of EITF 2025 Advisory Council. سنفتح المجال بعد لحظات للنقاش مع الصحفيين. Press conference will be held in few minutes, but before that, we're going to listen to Mohamed Rouen, an Algerian musician and recording art artist. Well known in Algeria for his performances of flamenco and Casbah style, Casbah style jazz, and especially for his use of the mondo. Mohamed Rouen, Tfuddal. And after that, we will open the space for the audience to ask questions to each of لكل من وزير التجارة وترقية الصادرات سيد طيب زيتوني لرئيس المجلس الاستشاري لمعرض التجارة بين الدول الإفريقية لسيدة نائبة الرئيس التنفيذي لبنك التجارة بين الدول الإفريقية أفريكسين بانك ولممثل السفير ألبرت موشانغا لشؤون الصناعة والمعادن وريادة الأعمال والسياحة وفوضية الاتحاد الافريقي إذن بعد ذلك مباشرة بعد الاستماع لمحمد روان سنأخذ أسئلة الصحفيين الموجودين في القاعة وأسئلة الصحفيين عبر مواقع التواصل الذين يتابعون مجريات هذا اللقاء محمد روان والفرقة المرافقة له ونعود بعد قليل إن شاء الله ندعو السيدة والسادة الصحفيين البقاء في القاعة والجلوس في الجهة اليمنى من القاعة للتمكن من طرح أسئلتهم لكل من السيد وزير التجارة وترقية الاستثمار السيد رئيس المجلس الاستشاري لمعرض التجارة بين البلدان الإفريقية 2025 والرئيس السابق لجمهورية نيجيريا الاتحادية السيدة نائبة الرئيس التنفيذي لبنك التجارة بين البلدان و. أيضا ممثل السفير ألبرت موشانغا لشؤون الصناعة والمعادن وريادة الأعمال والسياحة بمفوضية الاتحاد الإفريقي فضلكم سيدات وسادة رجاء الجلوس في أماكنكم رجاء الهدوء من فضلكم 
نستمع لمقاطع محمد روان ونبدا الندوه الصحفيه بعد قليل فضلكم سيدات والساده مدامز ميسيو
تصفيق قال السيد روان والطاقم المرافق له شكرا جزيلا راح نبداو بعد لحظات الندوه الصحفيه حول التوقيع على هذه الاتفاقيه المهمه اي اي تي اف 2025 التي تهدف اساسا لزيادة الوعي حول الدورة الرابعة للمعرض التجاري الإفريقي المزمع عقده في الجزائر في سبتمبر من السنة المقبلة بإذن الله ليمثل بذلك خطوة مهمة نحو معالجة الفجوة في معلومات التجارة والسوق من فضلكم سيدات والسادة الرجاء الهدوء من فضلكم مدام زي ميسيو سيو بلي سيدات والسادة الحضور من فضلكم الالتحاق بأماكنكم حتى يتسنى لنا بداية الندوة الصحفية ودعوة السيد الوزير والسادة ممثلي مختلف الهيئات الإفريقية للإجابة على أسئلتكم سنأخذ بعض الأسئلة للصحفيين المتواجدين في القاعة وأسئلة أيضا للصحفيين الذين تابعوا مجريات التوقيع على هذه الاتفاقية الشراكة المهمة بالنسبة للجزائر والقارة الإفريقية على حد سواء هل هل الصحفيين موجودين في القاعة نستطيع أن نبدأ؟ I invite now Mr. Tayyip Zitouni, Minister of Trade and Export Promotion. Sayyid al-Wazir, tfaddal. Sayyid Tayyip Zitouni, Wazir al-Tijara wa Taqiyyat Sadirat, tfaddal ma'ana. Mr. Chiza Charles Shumya, representing Ambassador Albert Mushanga, Commissioner for Trade and Industry African Union Commission. Mr. Shawqi Jabali, representing His Excellency Wamkili Mini, Secretary General, IFCFTA Secretariat, Chairperson of the EITF 2025, Advisory Council, Afriksim Bank. His Excellency, Chief Olishigono Basanju, Chairperson of the EITF 2025 Advisory Council and former President of Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please join us. Kanayo Awani, Executive Vice President, Intra African Trade Bank. سيدات وسادة الحضور الأسئلة ستكون خصيصا حول التوقيع على هذه الاتفاقية التي تخص اي اي تي اف 2025 المزمع عقدها في سبتمبر من 2025 من فضلكم تفضل ناخذ سؤال الأول حسن إنجازات بونجور تو الموند حسن بور لو ماغازين إنجازات دونك Welcome for everybody, for uh, our guests. Ma question s'adresse uh, au ministre uh, du Commerce et de la Promotion des Exportations, M. Tayeb Zitouni. Uh, donc, uh, l'Algérie uh, met des ambitions uh, grandes donc, par rapport à la prochaine édition d'IATA qui se tiendra en septembre 2025. 
vous comptez, d'après les chiffres que vous avez annoncés, donc vous comptez dépasser en termes de chiffre d'affaires, en termes de euh, ce qui a été annoncé par rapport à la précédente, la précédente édition qui a été tenue en Égypte. L'Algérie compte dépasser et réaliser un chiffre d'affaires euh, aussi important. Je voudrais savoir quels sont les mécanismes que comptez-vous faire pour justement atteindre cet objectif دون عندنا مشكل في في السماعات سماعتين ولا ثلاثة ما الترجمة ما هيش تلحق هم شو هذا؟ no I can't you have no I don't think it's سؤال أول سؤال. Euh, on prend une autre question des médias qui sont en ligne les médias en ligne on prend une deuxième question euh, deuxième question Haria Jaja télévision le Jazaïri donc bonjour tout le monde c'est madame Haria Jaja journaliste, grand reporter à la télévision algérienne nous sommes aussi heureux d'être ici présents, d'assister à la naissance de cet événement, à savoir la prochaine grande foi africaine, qui certainement aura un impact indéniable sur l'économie africaine, sur le commerce, et voire même un impact au niveau régional et international. Comme tout le monde le sait, d'abord l'Algérie, nous avons tous été élevés et grandis avec la notion africaine depuis, on va dire, les premiers cours de l'histoire sur le mouvement de libération en Afrique. Et nous continuons à accorder un intérêt particulier à l'Afrique. Aujourd'hui, c'est l'ère du regroupement, c'est l'ère de la compétition économique, c'est l'ère de la concurrence. Et l'Algérie essaye, tant bien que mal, avec tous les efforts qu'elle accorde au continent africain, à doubler d'efforts avec tous les autres pays africains, à se positionner en tant que puissance. Je ne parle pas de l'Algérie seulement, mais de tous les pays du continent qui veulent bien œuvrer pour l'intérêt de toutes les populations africaines qui ne demandent que davantage de développement, de prospérité et, je dirais, d'une vie meilleure. Donc je m'adresse à tous les participants, y compris notre monsieur le ministre du Commerce, pour dire la position d'aujourd'hui ou le challenge de demain ne sera pas uniquement l'économie interafricaine de B2B entre les pays africains tout le continent avec toutes ces richesses qu'il recèle mais aussi de se positionner sur le marché international comme nous l'avons suivi tout à l'heure les intervenants ont bien indiqué que notre participation à l'économie mondiale est toute réduite et que plus de 80% de nos importations viennent en dehors du dehors de la, des continents africains, donc elles viennent d'autres pays extérieurs. Comment cet événement pourrait œuvrer et contribuer à, à justement à converger les efforts de tous les pays africains à se positionner en tant que puissance économique et commerciale sur le plan planétaire on, on entend les réponses. On commence avec vous, Monsieur le ministre. Merci. والصحفيات على اهتمامهم بهذا الحدث الدولي القاري الذي هو تقريبا يعتبر قمة الأحداث أو الإجراءات أو المشاريع الاستثمارية والتجارية والاقتصادية في قارتنا ومن خلال قارتنا إلى الكثير من القارات المجاورة لنا بطبيعة الحال الجميع يتساءل عن ما هي هذه التظاهرة وما قيمتها وما وضعها الاستراتيجي وانعكاساتها على اولا التجاره البينيه الافريقيه ثانيا يعني بعث النشاطات والاستثمارات داخل الجزائر ومن خلالها كذلك يعني تعاملنا مع مختلف قارات العالم واندماجنا في سلاسل القيم العالميه 
وأخذ مكانة وموقع لنا كقارة كدولة جزائرية وكقارة إفريقية في خضم هذه الخريطة التي ترسم الخريطة الاقتصادية الجديدة التي ترسم حاليا نحن لنا مؤهلات حتى أجمع بين السؤالين لنا مؤهلات كثيرة منها تاريخية منها ثقافية ومنها اقتصادية ومنها حتى جيوسياسية مؤهلاتنا تمكننا على أننا نحط ونضع الهدف عالي وعالي جدا سأل الأخ الصحافي ما هي الإجراءات أو الميكانيزمات التي تمكننا من بلوغ الهدف الذي بلغته التظاهرة التي أقيمت في مصر وهي 47 مليار دولار دولار أمريكي وممكن هل نصل إلى هذا الحد أو نتجاوزه أقول نحن أنميل بارتريوت فور أتان لي زوبجيكتيف تراسي ديجا بار لالجيري إي بار لياتيا جو بريفير نكمل باللغة العربية يعني حتى تكون لغة واحدة بالنسبة للمترجمين أقول أننا وضعنا عدة ميكانيزمات عندنا مؤهلات وخصائص اللي تأهلنا باش أننا نكون في مستوى هذا الحدث ونبلغ هذه الأهداف أولا مؤهلاتنا أو خصائصنا هي تاريخية الجزائر كانت قبلة للطوار وعندها تاريخ في عريق في عبر التاريخ في إفريقيا كنا يقال لنا أن الجزائر مكة الطوار لأنها كانت رافقت كل الدول الإفريقية التي كانت تبحث عن استقلالها ثم الجزائر بعد الاستقلال كذلك وبعد استقلال الكثير من الدول وأخذوا بحالة الجزائر كحالة مدرسة ومن خلالها تحرر الجميع من الدول الإفريقية كذلك انتقلنا إلى بناء اقتصادي وعندنا مؤهلات أخرى أننا رافقنا الدول الإفريقية والكثير من الدول الإفريقية التي كانت تبحث عن نفسها أنذاك خاصة بعد استقلالها والجزائر كانت وضعت يعني إمكانياتها المادية والمالية في خدمة هذه الدول وساندنا وساعدنا الكثير من الدول الإفريقية والحمد لله عندنا علاقات تربطنا أولا تاريخية قلت ثم أنها علاقات اقتصادية وعلاقات مرافقة كذلك عندنا مؤهلات يعني جيوسياسية أخرى مواقف الجزائر الدولية اليوم ومن خلال مواقف السيد رئيس الجمهورية عبد المجيد تبون تمكننا أننا دولة سلام دولة سلم دولة باحثة دائما عن الاستقرار دولة دائما تدعم ما كل ما يسبو إلى الاستقرار وعندما نتكلم على الاستقرار نتكلم على الاقتصاد وعندما نتكلم على الاقتصاد نتكلم على التجارة الجزائر هي اليوم قاطرة من في قارتنا الإفريقية وعبر العالم لتبحث عن السلام عن السلم عن الأمن عن الهدوء عبر العالم كي نتمكن من بعث حركة اقتصادية وتجارية تمكننا كذلك من بلوغ الأهداف كذلك الجزائر تتمكن أو تتوفر على الكثير من المقومات الاقتصادية وكنت في كلمتي يعني قبل قليل تكلمت على بعض المؤهلات اللي تمكن الجزائر أنها تلعب هذا الدور وتكون كذلك قاطرة أخرى ليس فقط تاريخية ليست فقط سياسية ليست فقط جيوسياسية بل كذلك تقدر تلعب الدور أنها تكون قاطرة اقتصادية من خلال المؤهلات والانطلاقة الفعلية في الكثير من التصحيحات والتصليحات التي باشرتها الجزائر منذ مدة خاصة منذ 2020 والإجراءات والإصلاحات الاقتصادية التي قمنا بها والهدف الذي رسم على أننا نطور صادراتنا خارج المحروقات على أننا من خلال تطوير صادراتنا خارج المحروقات وهو تطوير الشبكة الهيكلية أو القاعدية من أجل بعض استثمارات في الجزائر إذا ما يمكننا اليوم قلت من شبكة طرقات من موانئ من مقومات بشرية خاصة أن الجزائر اليوم تنتج أكثر من 250 ألف جامعي في السنة مقومات كذلك اقتصادية من ما وهبنا الله عز وجل من خيرات اقتصادية مؤهلات كذلك يعني قلت من لزنفراسكتور من الهياكل القاعدية اللي تخلينا كذلك نأمل أننا نلعب هذا الدور كذلك الثقة اللي تمتع بها الجزائر والمكان اللي تمتع بها الجزائر في أفريقيا تخلينا نقول بأننا ممكن جدا أو متأكدين إن شاء الله أن من سنة 2025 تنتهي كل الإجراءات والإصلاحات التي باشرتها الجزائر لكي نبلغ الأهداف المسطرة 
الاخت كذلك من تلفزيون الجزائري تكلمت على الاهتمام الخاص بافريقيا ونظن بلي هذا مو شيء جديد على الجزائر هذا الجزائر لعبت دورها تاريخيا واليوم ما زالها انها تواصل في هذا الدور وبالنسبه لنا لياتياب هو موعد اللي توج كل هذه الاجراءات كل هذه الاصلاحات كل هذه العلاقات لان منذ الاستقلال اليوم مضينا على وثيقه اللي كنتوا تشوفوا فيها اول مره الجزائر تمضى عليها منذ تاريخ تاريخ منذ استقلالها وهذه الوثيقه اللي مضيناها اليوم مش فقط معرض كباقي المعارض معرض يحمل في طياته الكثير والكثير من المعاني والكثير من المشاريع المستقبليه للقاره الافريقيه هذه الوثيقه اللي مضيناها اليوم مش فقط بين تعد من بين 70 معرض الذي تنظمه صافكس كل سنه لكن هو موعد خاص هو موعد سياسي هو موعد تاريخي هو موعد ثقافي لكن هو ايضا موعد اقتصادي بامتياز نامل من خلاله اننا نبلغ الاهداف المسطره من جهه من جهه ثانيه اود في الاخير ان اشكر كل الدول التي يعني مررت يعني بدقه شديده وشديده جدا كل المقومات اللي تتمتل بها تتمتع بها الجزائر بعد مصر وجنوب افريقيا الجزائر قدمت الترشح نتاعها قدمت كل المؤهلات اللي تسخر بها وفي هناك لجنه يتراسها خبراء يتراسها مؤسسات افريقيه من الاتحاد الافريقي من ليكزيم بانك من الياتياف من الاتحاد الافريقي اللي مروا كل هذه الشروط المطلوبه اللي تطلبها هذه هذه التظاهره ولقاوها متوفره في الجزائر اكثر من 20 الف يعني فندق او 2000 فندق والالاف من الغرف اكثر من 2.7 مليار دولار صادرات الجزائر نحو افريقيا منها 650 مليون دولار خارج المحروقات نحو افريقيا اكثر من يعني اواصر الاتصال وجسور الاتصال بيننا وبين افريقيا اذا كل هذه الامور مكنتنا وامور اخرى مكنتنا اننا نتبوء هذه المكانه و نفوز بهذا السباق والإخوة الذين صدقوا كانوا نزهاء وأقروا بالحقيقة وأعطونا تنظيم هذه التظاهرة التي نأملها أن تكون موعدا خارق أو موعدا يعني خارج على كل المواعيد اللي سبقت للجزائر وأنها نظمتها تكون أحسن منها إن شاء الله شكرا شكرا سيد الوزير أعطيه الكلمة لسيدة كانايو أواني مش يور إكسينسي Thank you very much, um, Honorable Minister. Let me put it this way. I see the process that we are embarking upon now, IATF, the um, African Continental Free Trade agreement as the fourth stage of our liberation, fourth stage of our liberation. The first stage was what we did individually in our different countries to put down the yoke of colonialism. And your country here in Nigeria did it beautifully well. You fought for it and you succeeded. The second stage was for us to help others and liberate the whole of Africa. Again, your country, Algeria, was in the forefront of helping other countries in Africa for us to completely liquidate the colonial, uh, colonialism and apartheid. You played your role and you played it extremely well. The third stage 
was what came out at the end of last century and at the beginning of this century and this millennium. When Africa looked at the situation of our continent and we substituted AU for OAU. We needed a new organization. We needed something that was better than what we had, and we succeeded. Again, this country played a magnificent role in that process, as I can claim to be an eyewitness and a participant. Now I say that where we are now is the fourth uh, stage of our liberation. What we did up till the third stage was essentially political, essentially social within ourselves. It was also essentially in silos. One country doing the best that it can do with assistance, maybe bilateral, and some a little bit of multilateral. But this fourth stage, we have seen that it is it has to be multilateral. We cannot continue to go in silos. And that is why, for me, we must appreciate the effort of African Bank. We must appreciate the effort of our leaders who, about three, four years ago, came together and signed the agreement on, inter, uh, on African continental uh, free trade. African continental free trade agreement will not move as much as it should move unless we have the like of Afri uh, intra-African trade fair, which brings in market, which brings in information about products, which brings in information about what we need, what we know about ourselves. Part of our problem is not having enough information about ourselves. We look outside, not inward. You may not know what the next country to you is producing because where you look is outside Africa. And yet, a lot is being produced in Africa that we can actually be able to take advantage of. Uh, of. Or why do we have to take our products outside Africa to add value. And then that product is brought back to us. Let me take one, cocoa. Why do we have to ship our cocoa beans to Switzerland? Then they turn it to chocolate. And then we buy it and turn it to whatever we want. We eat it. Why can't cocoa beans or cocoa powder be brought to Algeria and you turn it to chocolate and you turn it to uh, 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 dessert and then let us trade more among ourselves? I just take one example. And do you know that cocoa industry in the world is a 35 
uh, one, sorry, it is it's a $135 billion industry. $135 billion industry. And what do the cocoa producers in Côte d'Ivoire, Ghana, Nigeria, and West Africa mainly, what do they get out of $135 billion? $9 billion. The rest of us, the rest of, of, of it goes to those who turn it to, to chocolate, those who ship it, uh, and those who market it all over the world. Now, just an example, and you can take that example in almost all the commodities. I was asking when I got here yesterday that, look, why can't we get date from here to West Africa? And when I want to buy date, they say I can import date from Europe. Why should I have to import date from Europe when Europe does not produce date? Now, the IATF and the Africa Free Trade Agreement come together to really move us to Africa that we want. In terms of collaboration, in terms of sharing information, in terms of knowledge about ourselves, it is shameful, shameful that among ourselves, we only participate in trade to the tune of 14%, 86% with, with the rest of the world. Mm. And yet, we could easily go from that 14% uh, increase by at least 10% to 24% within a space of two, three years. If we, if we have the right information and we do the right thing, and get the infrastructure that will move us in Africa. It is cheaper to get things from Europe to our different countries because of the cheapness of transportation mm. than it is to move from one country in Africa to another country because of the high cost of transportation. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Shungu Obasanjo, uh, Kanayo Owani, do you want to add your answer to these two questions? Um, I think they've exhausted it, uh, the Honorable Minister Obasanjo. Otherwise, we take other questions. Yes, please. We take other questions? We're going to take two other questions from online media, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. I have two questions from online media. Uh, there is one from Michael Piri from Malawi. And his question is, uh, IITF 2023 in Cairo was a huge success. How does Algeria plan to leverage that event for a much bigger and better IITF 2025? What lessons and challenges have been drawn? And how does Algeria intend to solve them, especially on exhibitors moving goods to the fair? That is the first question. The second question is addressed to EVP Kanayo, and it's from Brian Gugi from the Standard Newspaper. And his question is, um, what are the key takeaways from the last Cairo trade fair, and how will these les lessons bear on the Al Algiers trade fair? Thank you. Thank you so much. We listen to the answers. Shukran. <clears throat> يظهر لي أنني كنت قد أعطيت إجابة ولو كانت مختصرة على السؤال الذي تم طرحه لكن في كلمة اليوم في الصباح تكلمت على المقومات خاصة اللوجستيكية التي تتوفر عليها الجزائر والاستثمارات التي قامت بها الجزائر تكلمت على 128 ألف كيلومتر من طرقات تكلمت على 36 يعني ميناء اللي يتوفر عليها الجزائر أو 36 مطار اللي توفر في الجزائر تكلمت على أكثر من 15 ميناء اللي موجودة في الجزائر نتكلم كذلك على مقومات أخرى 
من هياكل اللي تمكن الجزائر كدولة اللي استثمرت كثير تقريبا 80 من 80 بالمئة من المدخول القومي الخاص للجزائر هو مستثمر في الهياكل القاعدية اللي تضر وتعود بالكثير من الخيرات والفوائد على المواطنين وحتى على الاقتصاد لذا نظن نقل البضائع والولوج إلى الجزائر الجزائر هي بوابة لإفريقيا وتلتقي هي نقطة التقاء بين ثلاث قارات أوروبا، أسيا وكذلك هي مطلة ودولة تابعة لإفريقيا لذا هي نقطة التقاء ثانيا تكلمت على الطريق اللي يربط بين الجزائر العاصمة وليغوس ب 9000 وحتى يعني جنوب افريقيا ب 9900 كيلومتر يعني على طول الخط تكلمت كذلك على الطريق السيار او الطريق السيار اللي شرق غرب اللي يربط شرق الجزائر بغربها تكلمت كذلك على المشروع الجديد الذي تموله الجزائر حاليا اللي يربط الجزائر بغرب افريقيا اذا كل هذه وتكلم تكلم كذلك على الخطوط البحريه التي تم يعني برمجتها بين الجزائر بين موريتانيا بين السنغال وخطوط اخرى بحريه كذلك الخطوط الجويه اللي تربط اليوم الجزائر مع الكثير من عواصم العالم اللي تمكن كل هذه كل هذه الامكانيات تمكننا اننا نقول بان الجزائر اليوم صبحت نقطه التقاء ماهيش نقطه منعزله اللي يصعب الوصول اليها بل هي نقطه التقاء اليوم اتفاقاتنا مع الاتحاد الاوروبي مثلا كلهم يتكلموا على ان الجزائر هي بوابه لافريقيا ومن خلالها يتم يعني تصدير المواد الاوروبيه عن طريق الجزائر الى الى افريقيا، اذا هذا شهاده الاوروبيين انها الجزائر تقريبا تعتبر ارضيه او يعني محطه او اون بلاتفورم اللي من خلالها نقدر نلج الى الاسواق الافريقيه، اذا مشكل اللوجيستيك موش مطروح في الجزائر حتى فيما يخص المعرض. اللي الجزائر اليوم انطلقت في بناء قصر معارض جديد مم. الذي ان شاء الله سيكون جاهز مع بدايه او مع يعني نهايه السداسي الاول لسنه 2025 اللي حاليا عندنا 40000 متر مربع يعني كمساحه للعرض راح تضاف لها حوالي 60000 متر مربع اخرى وبالتالي راح تكون الجزائر متوفره على 100000 متر مربع ما نظنش بلي هذه المساحه موجوده في دوله اخرى من افريقيا الا الجزائر حاليا ثم دوله مصر اللي تتوفر كذلك على يعني مركز المؤتمرات لذا كل هذه المعطيات تخلينا نقول بان اننا جاهزين كل الجاهزيه وما اختيار لجنه الخبراء للجزائر وانتخاب الدول سواء تاع لازديكاب او الاتحاد الافريقي للجزائر حتى تحتضن وتكون وجهه لهذا المعرض الهام والهام جدا الا انها لاحظت هذه الامور كلها وشفتها ب ام عينها على الميدان وحنا نكون ان شاء الله في مستوى هذا الحد مستعدين ل 2025 وبعد 2025 السيد الوزير بطب ذا سكند كويشن واز فور هوم بليز ريمايند مي فور يو Yeah, of course. So I'll start by saying that the Intra-African Trade Fair series has co continued to live up to its objectives, and particularly so was for IETF 2023. One of the objectives of the Trade Fair is to see, as President Sebastian just said, is to have our traders and businesses look towards their neighbors and continue to look for as far away lands for sources of materials to buy their goods, to sell. And we had noticed in our interventions or in analysis that one of the major issues that is constraining in traffic and trade that made it stubbornly at the levels at which, at very low levels of 14, 15, 16%, is actually the lack of access to trade and market information. The businesses um, have been linked to historical ties colonial legacies, and those are the trade routes, even in terms of infrastructure. And as such, um, President Bassanjo um, elaborated on the cocoa issue, but also it's in every facet of aspect of our products, whether it is in tannery and leather, where it, it's East Africa is hugely, countries like Burundi are very, um, uh, have comparative advantage even in um, raw hide, for instance. Mm. For countries in West Africa that are looking for products, we look to New Zealand, as far away as New Zealand. It's in beef, 
you know, where Egypt will look to Argentina for what Chad produces or what Sudan produces. So we see it in all our facets of our, of our trade characteristics. You know, and, and that's one of the things we try to do with the trade fair, which is to bring buyers and sellers into one common platform, into a space, investors with investment opportunities, um, so that they can deal, at least so that they can see what other countries are producing. And part of the takeaways of the trade fairs, including the last one, is the hugely successful deals that are concluded. So in my speech, I mentioned that $120 billion, billion of deals have been concluded over the last three fairs. In Egypt alone, last year in Cairo, we did 44, about $43.8 billion of deals. As we monitor those deals today, about 15% of them have been, have been concluded. Because we continue to monitor them because the trade fair is not an end in itself. It's not just about contracting. We want to say that those deals get consummated. And so we see that success. I try, you know, and, and some of the success stories that have continued to resonate, you know, from those fairs. I mentioned in my speech about the SME Ghanaian business, women-led women women, women -led business, that is into um, dried fruits and cashews, that has been able to expand their markets from only Ghana to South Africa, to Kenya, to Zimbabwe. There are others, even in the creative space. There's an Ivorian um, um, lady, singer and artist, her name is Reine Abla, who also tells us that participating in the Creative African Nexus at IATF um, last year, she has, she has been able to attract international exposure in America and the rest of Af Europe and the rest of Africa. So is a Caribbean chef, because we introduced gastronomy last year at IATF, you know, who says, out of that show, he has, he's now on a, an international TV series. So the success stories are, are not just for the large corporates, because some of the deals are con consummated by the large corporates, but also for the small businesses and even for the young people and the young artists. Um, that's not to say that um, in terms of lessons learned, there, were, there are issues that we have to build on, and, and, and we've been discussing with the government of Algeria around one of the greatest successes of the, the experience mm. You know, it has to be experiential. The trade fair has to be experiential, but I'm glad that Algeria has experience in this, where people experience, even the flow of movements of, of exhibitors is so important. Even the flow of, of the programs is so important. Egypt does have, um, has very good facilities, first class facilities in exhibition and uh, as well as uh, and conference. You know, um, and because the fair is, at, is, is, is what it is today. It, ha, it has now become a brand of its own. We want to also maintain those standards, even in Algeria. The brands, you know, people come to those fairs and say, I'm, I don't believe I'm in Africa. And that's so true, because it can be done here. And that's one of the things we'd like to replicate in Algeria. The, first, the experience of the, of the exhibition, the experience of the conferences, even the artistic impressions and expressions, um, the experience around logistics, that's what I'm talking about, experience. Around customs, around clearance of goods, around visa processes are very important for us to have um, the trade fair that we can build on and that we believe will be world class as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kanayo Awani, Executive Vice President, Intra-African Trade Bank. We are going to take last question in order to allow Mr. Uh, Shumya and Mr. Shauqi to have to say a word also. Last question. So, Al Akhir. Samhuli, as the Ka'is Sahafin, and the Wakhtra with Salam Alikum, Maria Buzina, who killed the Amber Jazaria, and I could put in Tahsu El Seed, Lazir, the Samah Seed, Lazir, Malum, and no Jazair, Wafi, Litizamatiha, Maha, Tiala Kata, Madduel, El Kara, Wilakin Mehir, Bama, El Forest, Will Imtiazet. التي ستمنحها الجزائر للدول الافريقيه من خلال هذا الملتقى وكذلك الرؤيه الاقليميه التي تسعى الى تجسيدها في المرحله القادمه وكذلك الجزائر معلوم انه هي عضو فاعل في لازليكاف ماذا عن المرحله القادمه في تجسيد هذه يعني المنطقه الحره سيد الوزير شكرا شكرا تفضل سيد الوزير شكرا <تصفيق> سيد الوزير شكرا اذا شكرا الاخ على السؤال ما هي الامكانيات و 
يعني المزايا اللي تقدر تمنحها الجزائر الجزائر منحت عبر التاريخ مزايا كثيره سواء كانت سياسيه وتكلم عليها السيد الرئيس وباسانغو بامعان لانها لعبت دورها كقاطره لتحرر الدول الكثيره الافريقيه وضحات من اجل كثير من خيراتها باش انها تحت ان الدول الكثيره من افريقيا نالت استقلالها هذه تضحيه قامت بها الجزائر لا لشيء لا لاهداف تجاريه ولا لاهداف اقتصاديه ولا لاهداف تموقعيه الا انها قناعه وعقيده بالنسبه للجزائر بالنسبه لشهدائها ووصيه شهدائها انها تقوم وتواصل تحرر القاره الافريقيه والسيد رئيس نيجيريا سابقا كان تكلم عليها واعطى شهادات على نظام الجزائر ونظام الجزائر ضد الابارتيد وضد كل نظام او كل انظمه الاستعمار والاستبداد في افريقيا او في غيرها هذا من جهه من جهه ثانيه نظن بانه الجزائر كذلك لعبت دورها اقتصاديا عندما مدكنا دول كثيره افريقيه من بعض الديون وبعض التمويلات في الكثير من المشاريع وفيما بعد الجزائر عندما كانت عندها صحه ماليه وخرجنا من الازمه الامنيه اللي صابت الجزائر كنا مسحنا كل الديون للدول الافريقيه وكانت تتجاوز 3 مليار دولار انا ذاك يعني بكل يعني تكامليه مع الدوله مع الدول الافريقيه وهذا ايمانا منها بان الجزء الجزائر جزء لا يتجزا من هذه القاره ومصيرنا كدول افريقيه مشترك واهدافنا مشتركه سيد الرئيس كذلك باسانغو تكلم على سلاسل القيم لان الجزائر اليوم كذلك تعي من خلال الياتياف ومن خلال لازليكار تعي جيدا ان الاستعمار هو اشكال متعدده ليس فقط الاستعمار العسكري ما دام ان خيراتنا تروح كمواد اوليه الى دول اخرى تصنعها وتخلق القيمه المضافه في هذه الدول ثم تصدر لنا المواد المصنعه النهائيه باثمان باهظه وباهظه جدا هذه كذلك عنصر وجزء من من او مظهر من مظاهر الابارتيد والاستعمار احنا اليوم كدول افريقيه مرغمين لسنا مخيرين على اننا نمشي في خلق سلاسل القيم واستغلال كل خيراتنا وكل مواردنا الطبيعيه وموادنا الاوليه في تصنيعها وتحويلها واندماجنا في سلاسل القيم العالميه الميكانيزمات الاخرى التي تمكن الجزائر من انها تكون يعني تزيد تبرهن وتجسد هذه وترسخ هذه الافكار التاريخيه والجيوسياسيه انها ماشيه ببرنامج اقتصادي نحو افريقيا تكلمت على الكثير من البنوك تكلمت على الكثير من الانجازات من لي زانفراستركتور اللي الجزائر اليوم راهي في طور انجازها وفيه الكثير اللي يمكن حاضر معنا لو ديريكتور جينيرال دو لاجونس دو لا بروموسيون دو لافستيسمون يعني او نيفو دو لافريك اي مونديال وتشوف يعني حجم الاستثمارات اللي تحملها الجزائر اليوم لتوجهها خاصه الى الدول الافريقيه سواء كانت بنى تحتيه سواء كانت يعني تجهيزات سواء كانت اعانات للكثير من الدول الافريقيه اذا هذا الشيء كله يمثلنا اننا نكون وجهه اقتصاديه بامتياز في سنه 2025 ومن خلال يعني كذلك اندماجنا وان الجزائر كانت دائما سباقه على انها تاشر بالحروف الاولى عفوا على كل اتفاق اللي تقوم بها القاره الافريقيه واخيرا اتفاق التجاره الحره الافريقيه نظن الجزائر كانت من اولى الدول واليوم كذلك احنا من بين ثمن دول الاولى راح يكون معنا بعد قليل الامين العام للازليكاب اننا كنا من بين الدول الاولى التي اشرت على هذا الاتفاق وباوامر من السيد رئيس الجمهوريه عبد المجيد تبون وبتوجيه منه سواء في مشاركته في القمه الافريقيه سواء في توجيهاته باش نشارك في منطقه الحره الافريقيه انه فيه توجيهات صارمه اننا نمشي الى ان نكون من بين ثمن الدول الاولى في افريقيا التي تمشي في سكونابيل لانيشيتيف جيدي او المبادره الموجهه الافريقيه باش اننا نكون قاطرة ايضا اقتصادية في افريقيا والحمد لله الدور هذا تقوم به الجزائر بكل اريحية وبكل قناعة وبكل اخوة وبكل تضامن افريقي ما موش بحسابات يعني معينة ولو او باشكال من الاشكال اللي تراها في بعض الدول الاخرى لكن بكل تجرد ايمانا منا باننا اندماجنا الافريقي هو كذلك اندماج اولا اندماج اقتصادي 
وانتماج تجاري لكن يمشينا الهدف هو الاندماج السياسي نحو افريقيا موحده افريقيا دوله واحده بدون حدود ان شاء الله وبعمله واحده وبتجاره موحده شكرا شكرا سيدي الوزير نعطي كلمه لكل من السيد شيزا شارز شوميا الذي لم يتدخل بعد كلمه اخيره من فضلك والسيد شوقي جبالي Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Now, when we are talking about uh, the African Union, we are not talking about the union of governments only. We are talking about the union of the people. Mr. Sayyid Karim, the minister has an urgent call. He is going to leave right now, and you can uh, pursue. Thank you. Thank you. So we are not talking about the union uh, of the governments only, but we are talking about the union of the people. African people have to come together. And there are so many ways how that can be done. But since time in memorial in history, especially African history, one of the things that has brought African people together has been trade. You hear about a lot of trade routes that were there in the continent. When colonialism came, that changed, of course, when we are all looking outside. But we believe that even now, trade can be that powerful tool to bring people together. Now, this is one of the major advantages and the major goals of the IATF. When people are going to come to Algeria next year uh, to do the trade fair, they are not only coming to do trade deals, they will experience the people, they will experience the culture, mm. they will experience the food. That is what we need to build a strong African Union. So indeed, the fair is going to give us that opportunity to make sure that Africa is, is coming together. The minister and His Excellency Obasanjo also mentioned that the fair being held in Algeria is like a gateway uh, of bringing Africa not only to North Africa itself, but to the European world. Uh, there was a question which was asked about how Africa is doing that to make sure that it's strong abroad. We believe that Africa has, first of all, to be strong domestically here. A strong Africa is very important to be strong abroad. You cannot be strong, weak here at home and strong abroad. So the IATF, IATF 2025, is going to continue that legacy of making Africa strong here abroad. And you realize that uh, the world is recognizing that Africa is coming up. That's why last year it was admitted into the G20. So we are indeed growing a strong continent, and we want to urge each and every uh, stakeholder to effectively participate uh, in IATF 2025. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Last word for Mr. Shawqi Jabali, representing His Excellency Wamkili Mini, Secretary General, IFCFTA Secretary. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Moderateur. Moi, mon message, uh, il est un peu bref et rapide. Je vais parler de, du partenariat. Très bien. En fait, uh, tout projet, non pas uniquement Las Vegas, ne peut pas réussir sans avoir des partenaires de gros partenaires. Et lorsqu'on parle de partenaires euh, au niveau de l'ASLECAF, l'Afrique Zimbang, c'est le premier partenaire de, du secrétariat de l'ASLECAF. Lorsque vous voulez réussir, vous, vous devez compter sur vos partenaires, mais surtout sur vos gros partenaires. Euh, avec l'Afrique Zimbang, euh, l'EATF, c'est la place de marché de l'ASLECAF. C'est l'un des instruments opérationnels de l'ASLECAF. Il, il y en a d'autres. Euh, qui sont développés par, d'ailleurs par l'Afrique Zimbank, à noter le, le, euh, le système de paiement euh, panafricain et le, la, la facilité d'ajustement. L'autre partenaire le, euh, important aussi, c'est l'Algérie. L'Algérie est un pays euh, partenaire, est un grand pays. Euh, euh, Son Excellence, Monsieur le Ministre, a annoncé euh, tout à l'heure que l'Algérie avait euh, rejoint l'initiative du commerce guidé, qui est la mise en application euh, opérationnel de l'ASLECAF, euh, ce qui veut dire que les opérateurs économiques algériens sont en mesure de pouvoir commencer le commerce sous les préférences de l'ASLECAF depuis décembre 2023. Donc, pour réussir, 
vous devez compter sur vos euh, partenaires, vos grands partenaires, et l'Afrique Zimbabwe, encore une fois, et l'Algérie sont de gros partenaires pour l'ASDK. Merci. Thank you so much. Kanayo Awani, you have a last word. Yes, uh, I wanted to add that, as with every major event, the greatest beneficiaries are the locals. And it's been our experience with other trade fairs that the locals must, not, must seize the opportunity. And it requires being prepared, it requires engaging, it's worth showing interest, engaging us and engaging all the stakeholders to be part of the events. Um, it is so important that it affects, as I also mentioned earlier, the local economy. It affects the man, the business, the taxi driver in the street, the um, hotels, the tourism sec um, assets that you have, and the businesses. The businesses have a huge opportunity to engage with the rest of Africa, as it is in line with the ambitions of the government of, of Algeria, to support trade and facilitate and, tr and finance trade between Africa and the rest of the world. Unfortunately, the uh, minister has left, but will still engage later in the day. It's a unique, unique opportunity for us to introduce a program. For instance, an Algeria, Africa trade and investment promotion program. Something we've introduced with the rest of Africa. We have Egypt, Africa trade and investment promotion program at $1 billion. We have Nigeria, Africa trade and investment promotion program. We have introduced this, you know, and what it does, the program is interventionist in nature. We are deliberate in intervening and facilitating trade between Algerian public and private sector with the rest of Africa. Not just financing, but also non-financing. You know, exposing them to markets, exposing businesses, contractors, your ceramic industry, your low-cost bin industry, and all of those um, industries where you have um, great expertise, even in professional services to the rest of Africa. I just wanted to add that, that because the trade fair is not an end in itself, it is uh, it's actually supposed to be an ongoing promotion of Algeria-Africa trade, as it were. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I would like to thank all of you. Uh, starting with you, Your Excellency, Chief Olishigono Basanjo, thank you so much for your participation, for your presence. You are chairperson of the ITF 2025 Advisory Council and former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you so much. Kanayu Awani, you are Executive Vice President, Intra-African Trade Bank. Thanks to Chizar Charles Shumia, representing Ambassador Albert Moshanga, Commissioner for Trade and Industry African Union Commission. Thank you, Mr. Shauqi Jabali, you are presenting His Excellency Wakili Mini, Secretary General, IFCFTA Secretary. Thank you so much. And this information, please, the members of the ITF 2025 Advisory Council are holding the first session of this council, which will take place after lunch here, okay? And you are uh, invited to lunch. Uh, Restaurant Oasis, thank you so much for your participation. Shukran jazeelan ala hudurkum wa shukran na'atadil min sahafiin li anu maghlinnash nakhdu kul as'ila l'wakht dayyik. Nshukrukum wa naltaqi insha'Allah ba'da بعد الغداء نذكر الزملاء الصحفيين أن هناك أعضاء المجلس الاستشاري لـ ATF 2025 يعقدون الجلسة الأولى لهذا المجلس والتي ستعقد هنا بمركز المؤتمرات عبد اللطيف الرحال شكرا جزيلا لكم صحة So come on, and come on, we call on, all Africa, come let us be our dream, for together we grow stronger, and united, paint out the sky.